Hey, so I made a turkey sweet potato chili today and I wanted to show you two different tools that you could use. I've shown these to you guys I think before, at least one of them. Um, so this is my immersion blender that I have. It's a Cousinart. I got it, oh gosh, probably five to seven years ago uh, from like Bed Bath & Beyond or something. I think it was around like $30 then. Um, so this is a great, it's a great tool. There's the blade. Um, and you literally, if you're making something, you plug it in and you literally just stick it in and kind of move it up and down and it sucks it up into um, this I don't know, holder thing <laughs> and blends it really, really well. It would blend this whole thing um, into a nice smooth consistency if that's what you want. Um, because I am just doing this for um, the example, I actually used my bullet. So I had to get a new bullet this year. I had one actually my mom gave me um, that they had had for like 10 years and then never used for five years. And then I got it for a few years and it finally died. So I went into Costco and got a new one this year. Um, so that's actually what I used to blend my sweet potato chili. So this is the before. As you can see, it's pretty chunky. We like our soups tend to, you know, pretty chunky typically. But then I took it into the um, bullet and you can see it's so smooth. Okay, this is kind of what we call um, honey thick or pudding thick in the nutrition world or with speech therapists if you ever have to get a swallow evaluation. Um, so this is a good this is a good consistency when you're on that blended pureed diet. Okay, as you can see, there's no lumps, there's no chunks of beans or meat. It's very very smooth. Okay, so literally the same thing, blended, not blended. So um, I, I don't like this one quite as much. I feel like it's a little big. So these are the old sizes. I'm not sure even how many ounces that is, but it's, it's a lot. So um, this, is the, this is the old one. I'm sorry, I think this is the new one. I'm not sure what I said there. So I missed the old ones because this was kind of a perfect amount, especially for surgery patients. Um, but the nice thing is about this, you can make more and then you can always get like your little Tupperware containers. And these are, I think four ounces and freeze it. Um, this is another example. I think I got this at Ikea eons ago. I'm actually switching to mostly glass now just because, um, it doesn't leach the plastics into your food. Um, it just stores better. Things don't get frostbit as much. But anyways, this is just kind of an example of what you can do and what you want it to actually look like when you're done, okay? So let me know if you have any questions. Oh, another thing, this is a great, it's like chili, any kind of soup is really nice to make um, before surgery, especially for those of you that are maybe, you know, trying to figure out what to do before surgery, want to start planning, but aren't really sure where to focus your energy. You know, making some great soups like this, especially in the fall is nice because you can freeze this. I actually froze two big containers of this soup today because I had I actually had two huge pans of this going. So I froze um, two big, you know, quart containers for leftovers for this winter or some other time in the fall. So like your family could have this and then after surgery, you could have this. So it's literally the same thing and you can just freeze this and then blend it when you want it. Um, so you're eating the same meal. You're not making four different things at night, um, which is really, really nice and helps on the whole time thing too. So, all right, let me know if you have any questions um, or rent the recipe we posted. I never follow recipes with soups or very rarely. So um, I can post the one that I kind of use, but I always sort of do my own thing. So um, that's the great thing about soup. It's hard to screw them up. All right, <laughs> bye.